before we move to a new topic, we will uh, do one more example that of electron electron scattering. So, E minus plus E minus going to E minus plus E minus and then we will compute the differential scattering cross section for this process. You already know the S matrix to lowest order which gives a contribution is given by I 2 pi to the power fourth delta of P 1 prime plus P 2 prime minus P 1 minus P 2 times the Feynman amplitude m. There are two diagrams which contribute to this process at lowest order and these two diagrams are given by two incoming electrons of momenta P 1 and P 2 and then the outgoing electron of momenta P 1 prime P 2 prime, the exchange of virtual photon whose momentum is given by P 1 minus P 1 prime. The other diagram is obtained from this one by exchanging these two outgoing electrons. So, so this is the diagram for the second process. Here you have an incoming electron of momentum P 1, P 2, but this one has energy momentum P 2 prime and this one has energy momentum P 1 prime. So, so the virtual photon carries energy momentum which is given by Q equal to P 1 minus P 2 prime. We can use the Feynman rules to write down the amplitudes for these two processes and then we will add the amplitude keeping in mind that there is a relative minus sign we have to uh, use because of the exchange interaction. So, so the amplitude, the Feynman amplitude for this process ultimately is given by here I will start from this one. Uh, you have uh, this incoming electron U s of uh, P 2. Then there is this vertex which is I e gamma mu and then you have this outgoing electron which I will write u bar s prime of P 2 prime. Then you have a propagator, photon propagator. So, for a photon propagator I write eta mu nu divided by q square which is P 1 minus P 1 prime square and then I have an incoming electron for which I will write U r of P 1. Then I have a vortex for which I will write I e gamma nu and I have an outgoing electron for which I will write u bar r prime of P 1 prime. The second one is just obtained from the first one just by exchanging P 1 prime and P 2 prime. So, the amplitude for the second one is with a minus sign I will just write u bar r of P 2 prime r prime i e gamma nu u r of p 1 eta mu nu divided by p 1 minus p 2 
prime whole square and uh, u bar s prime of p 1 prime i e gamma mu u s of p 2. All right. So, so, so what we have to do now is we have to just consider the differential scattering cross section formula for the differential scattering cross section and then substitute this for the Feynman amplitude and then uh, simplify the formula to get the final answer. So, what is the differential scattering cross section? when you have two outgoing two incoming fermion and two outgoing fermion the differential scattering cross section is given by d sigma you have to remember the phase factor integration measure etcetera we are taking differently for fermions so for fermions this is m square divided by p1 dot p2 whole square minus m4 to the power half Okay. And then you have uh, 2 pi to the power fourth delta P 1 prime plus P 2 prime minus P 1 minus P 2 mod m square then I will have d q p 1 prime over 2 pi q m over e 1 prime then d q p 2 prime over 2 pi q m over e 2 prime. This is what is, uh, is the differential scattering cross section. Again, I will just integrate out uh, 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 this delta function and uh, finally, I will get d sigma over d omega. So, all one needs to do is to compute the mode m square and then you already know how to integrate out the delta function. You, you compute the mode square, you put it, you plug it in this formula and then you will get the final answer you have to make you have to keep in mind that the energy momentum conservation holds okay so let's do that what we will do is that we will now work in the center of mass frame so so in the center of mass frame the total momentum p 1 plus p 2 is equal to 0 and so is p 1 prime plus p 2 prime. So, you have the electrons, there are two incoming electrons with momenta p 1 and p 2 equal and opposite magnitude and then there are two outgoing electrons p 1 prime p 2 prime the scattering angle is given by theta. So, so therefore, the 4 vector p 1 mu is basically E which is p 1 0 and I will call this p 1 to be p I will denote this to be p then my p 2 will be minus p. So, so you have this p 2 is equal to p 2 mu is again e minus p. Similarly, you have p 1 prime mu is simply uh, e p 1 prime or I will denote this to be p prime 
and uh, p2 prime mu equal to e minus p prime so so i will use uh, uh, i will do the entire calculation in in the center of mass frame where the a uh, uh, four moment i have this form and then i i will evaluate mode square of this matrix element ah uh -huh. p1 lower mu is this okay why is it so 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 again what we will do is that we will sum over the polarization of outgoing electron and average over the polarizations of the incoming electrons so i have what i will call as m square average is simply sum over r s r prime s prime mod m square and what is the factor i will put 1 over 4 because there are two incoming electrons this is what i need to do so let's let's do it so this is 1 over 4 now there is an e fourth because this there is this e square here mod square and finally what i have is u r prime bar p1 prime gamma nu u r p1 u s prime bar p2 prime gamma nu u s p2 i have used this eta mu nu to contract one of these gamma matrices this divided by p1 minus p1 prime square and then minus the same thing but p1 prime and p2 prime are exchanged so u bar r prime p2 prime gamma nu u r p1 u bar s prime p1 prime gamma nu u s p2 divided by p1 minus p2 prime whole square this mod square this is what we need to evaluate again i will get four terms but uh, you will see that we need to evaluate only two of the four terms the remaining two we can just obtain by exchanging p1 prime and p2 prime so the first term in this expression is 1 over 4 e fourth times okay so what i will do is i will just instead of writing it and then deriving the trace what we will do is that we will consider 
mode square of this term and then see if we can simplify that. And finally, we will look at the cross term and the remaining cross term and then the mode square of this will be obtained by uh, exchanging p 1 prime and p 2 prime. So, So, the first term in this expression is forget about the 1 over 4 a fourth term, we will take care of it later. There is a summation over r and s, yeah, good. R s r prime s prime. So, first term is sum over r s r prime s prime and uh, then there is a 1 over p 1 minus p 1 prime whole fourth and mode square of this u bar r prime p 1 prime gamma nu u r p 1 u bar s prime p 2 prime gamma nu u s p 2 mode square. We need to evaluate this, but you keep in mind that this gamma nu here is a dummy index which is repeated. This is a number and this is also a number. So, this is just you, you cannot simply, so the whole mode square is just mode square of this times mode square of this, but uh, all you have to keep in mind is that in the first term, you have uh, while evaluating the mode square, you have to use a different domain index for the second one. Or what, what I am saying is, if you look at u bar r prime p 1 prime gamma nu u r p 1 u bar s prime p 2 prime gamma nu u s p 2 mode square by this what I mean is u bar r prime p 1 prime gamma nu u r p 1 conjugate because this is a number and then u bar r prime p 1 prime gamma mu instead of gamma nu u r p 1 this and similarly, the second term will give u bar s prime p 2 prime gamma nu u s p 2 conjugate of this and uh, u bar s prime p 2 prime gamma mu u s p 2, right. This is what you are doing. So, I am using gamma nu, the index, I am labeling the index nu for the complex conjugate of this and using the label mu for the term itself and then I am just rearranging them. Now, what I need to do is, I need to consider this and sum over r s r prime s prime. So, here again I have to sum over all the spin indices r s r prime s prime. You look at this, this only involves r and r prime, the first two terms and the second two terms involve only s and s prime and then we know what this is. We have already done this when we worked out the Compton scattering. So, what you get when you carry out the spin sum in this term is simply, so if you just consider the first two terms, this will give you 
trace of gamma nu and uh, p 1 slash plus m divided by 2 m, then gamma mu bar p 1 prime slash plus m divided by 2 m. This is that, this is what you will get from, from the first two terms and similarly, you will get exactly the same expression from the second two terms. So, so the, the whole thing is going to be the product of two traces, one is this and then the one is again trace of the same thing, but uh, the mu and nu indices are contracted properly. So, this is gamma nu p 1 slash plus m divided by 2 m gamma mu bar p 1 prime slash plus m divided by 2 m. But gamma mu bar according to our definition, O bar is just gamma 0, O dagger gamma 0. Therefore, gamma mu bar is gamma 0 gamma mu dagger gamma 0, which is nothing but if you use the expression for gamma mu dagger, it is gamma 0 square gamma mu gamma 0 square. So, this is simply gamma mu. Gamma mu bar is gamma mu, therefore, I will just simply remove the bar here as well as from here. So, this is what we will get when we sum over the spin indices. Now, all we need to do is we need to uh, we need to evaluate the trace and then we have to plug it in to get the first term. So, so this is of course, the evaluating the trace is very easy because this involves only four gamma matrices. So, so let us do that. So, so what, I, what I will do is that I will just look at the first term here and then the second term will have a similar expression. So, the first part involves evaluating trace of gamma nu p 1 slash plus m gamma mu p 1 prime slash plus m. So, this will have four terms, but two of them will have three gamma matrices whose trace will vanish identically. So, the remaining two terms are trace of gamma nu p 1 slash gamma mu p 1 prime slash plus m square trace of gamma nu gamma mu. So, this is what we have in the first part. This one is simply p 1 alpha p 1 prime beta times trace of gamma nu gamma alpha gamma mu gamma beta and here this is plus 4 m square eta mu nu because trace of gamma mu gamma nu is 4 times eta mu nu. Now, we have evaluated this trace in the last lecture. This is simply given by trace of gamma mu, gamma alpha, gamma nu, gamma beta is simply 4 eta mu alpha, eta mu beta minus 4 eta mu nu, eta alpha beta plus 4 eta mu beta eta mu alpha. This is a 
this is the trace. Now, what I have to do is, I have to consider this and multiply it with P 1 alpha P 1 prime beta. So, P 1 alpha P 1 prime beta that will give me 4 the overall factor of 4 I will just take it out first one will be P 1 nu P 1 prime nu minus eta mu nu times P 1 dot P 1 prime and this term plus P 1 nu P 1 prime nu. Okay. So, this is what I get for this term here. Now, I have to add 4 m square eta mu nu here to get the first part. So, so when I do that, I get the first part to be equal to 4 p 1 mu p 1 prime nu minus I will write it first p 1 nu p 1 prime mu minus uh, eta mu nu p 1 dot p 1 prime and then finally, plus eta mu nu times m square. So, so the first part gives us this, the second part gives us this the same term except that the mu and nu are the indices mu and nu are contracted appropriately. Therefore, this quantity here will be there are 2 m to the power fourth, okay? 1 over 2 m to the power fourth and then uh, so, let us do that. When I substitute that for the first part, what I get here is 1 over 2 m to the power fourth and then there are 4 square 2 factors of 4 and the this quantity is P 1 mu P 1 prime mu plus P 1 nu P 1 prime mu minus eta mu nu P 1 dot P 1 prime plus eta mu nu m square that is from this part and then from this part again I will get an identical term. Huh? Second trace is P 2. Okay, okay, good. Thank you. So, this is P 2 and uh, P 2 prime. So, all I will get is P 2 mu. So, so the mu and nu are now, covariant indices and P instead of P 1, P 1 prime, I will get P 2, P 2 prime, P 2, P 2 prime nu plus uh, P 2 nu, P 2 prime mu minus eta mu nu, P 2 dot P 2 prime plus eta mu nu m square. All right. So, good. So, now, now what I have to do is that I have to carry out, I have to multiply all these terms and then I have to simplify them.
So, let us do that. So, this is equal to 1 over 2 m to the power fourth and uh, this is 16. The first term will give me p 1 dot p 2 p 1 prime dot p 2 prime. So, p 1 dot p 2 p 1 prime dot p 2 prime and then I will get uh, p 1 dot p 2 prime and p 1 prime dot p 2 then I have to multiply this minus p 1 dot p 1 prime p 2 dot p 2 prime plus m square p 1 dot p 1 prime. That is for the first term and then there are three more. So, the second term will give me p 1 dot p 2 prime plus p 1 dot p 2 prime times p 1 prime dot p 2 and uh, p 1 dot uh, p 2 p 1 prime dot p 2 prime. Now, that will multiply to the third which will give me p 1 dot p 1 prime with a minus p 2 dot p 2 prime. And finally, I will again get plus m square p 1 dot p 1 prime. So, uh, again the, the or in other words you, you, you could have simply concluded it uh, uh, that uh, the this term multiplied by this is identical to this term multiplied by this because this is symmetric under the exchange of mu and nu and hence they will just add up. Anyway, so then I will I have to multiply eta mu nu with the last term. So, this this will give me minus p 1 dot p 1 prime times eta mu nu will give me p 2 dot p 2 prime with a factor of 2 twice p 2. Then minus minus plus eta mu nu eta mu nu what is this? It is 4 okay? 4 p 1 dot p 1 prime p 2 dot p 2 prime. Then minus 4 m square p 1 dot p 1 prime. Finally, the last term multiplied to the second part which is uh, plus twice m square p 2 dot p 2 prime minus 4 m square p 2 dot p 2 prime plus 4 m 4. That is all you have. Okay? So, 
So, now you see that some of the terms will cancel here uh, and some of them will add up. For example, P 1 dot P 1 prime this and this will add up and uh, this, this, this will add up, none of these terms cancel, 2 m square, this and this they will just cancel and then these two will cancel and then you will get a factor of 4. So, what I will do is that I will just write down the answer for you 2 m to the power 4 times 32 p 1 dot p 2 p 1 prime dot p 2 prime plus p 1 dot p 2 prime p 1 prime dot p 2 minus m square p 1 dot p 1 prime minus m square p 2 dot p 2 prime plus 2 m fourth. I have taken a factor of 2, overall factor of 2. So, this gives me 2 m fourth. This term and this term will give me this. Adding these three terms will give me this. Similarly, you have this, this that will give me this one and uh, adding this, this p 1 dot p 2 prime will give me this one. Finally, what is left is this, 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 they will just cancel. All right. So, there are, there is this factor of 2 here, there are 4 minus and then this just cancel. So, these two add to give you this, these two add to give you this and then uh, you have uh, these two to give this, these three. All right. So, this is what you get uh, for uh, for the for the trace. Now, what I will do is that I am using the fact that I uh, the energy momentum is conserved. So, P 1 plus P 2 is just equal to P 1 prime plus P 2 prime. This implies a number of things. First of all, this implies P 1 dot P 2 is equal to p 1 prime dot p 2 prime. This also implies p 1 dot p 1 prime is equal to p 2 dot p 2 prime. So, I will use these two relations here. Okay. You just square it and then you remember that p 1 square, p 2 square both are equal to m square that will give you this relation. If you write this identity as p 1 minus p 1 prime equal to p 2 prime minus p 2 and then if you square now, you will get this identity. Now, I will substitute it here. Okay? So, when I substitute this here, what I get is the following. this simply becomes 1 over 2 m to the power fourth 32 times p 1 dot p 2 whole square. Similarly, these two are equal. So, what I will get is p 1 dot p 2 prime whole square and these two will add up minus twice m square p 1 dot p 1 prime plus twice m fourth. 
Now, what I claim is the following, I will just combine these two terms and then write it in a simpler fashion. So, so minus twice m square p 1 dot p 1 prime plus twice m fourth is simply equal to twice m square into m square minus p 1 dot p 1 prime, which is nothing but m square I will write it as p 1 square. Therefore, this is twice m square p 1 dot p 1 minus p 1 prime. All right. Then what I will use sir, I will use the energy momentum conservation rule to write it as twice m square p 1 dot p 1 minus p 1 prime is equal to p 2 prime minus p 2. So, so this is just twice m square p 1 dot p 2 prime minus p 1 dot p 2. I will substitute this here, then what I get is this is equal to 1 over 2 m fourth 32 times p 1 dot p 2 square plus p 1 dot p 2 prime square minus twice m square p 1 dot p 1 prime plus twice m square p 1 dot p 2 prime minus twice m square p 1 dot p 2. All right. Now, what you see here in from the last three terms, you, you just write, you can add them and then uh, Here? Ah, okay, I wrote it twice, right? Okay, okay. So that's the problem. Okay. Thank you. So plus twice m square p one dot p two prime minus twice m square p one dot p two. That's all I, I get for the first term in the trace. So now what what I, I have to do is, I have to evaluate one of the cross terms okay, and then the remaining two terms in the mode square of the matrix elements, I will just obtain by exchanging p 1 prime and p 2 prime. Okay. So, then finally, we will put everything in the formula for the differential scattering cross section and then obtain the scattering cross section for electron-electron scattering. Alright, so this we will do in the next lecture.